Joining us now is America First Action Senior Advisor, Sean Spicer, media reporter for The Hill, Joe Concha. Good to see you both. You know, Joe, something fascinating you discovered and wrote about, wow, everybody over at Conspiracy TV, NBC over there, um, they were all over the story in the beginning. Uh, how much coverage was in primetime last night? In primetime MSNBC, if you're talking about, now remember, the Chicago police announced at 7.53 p.m. that Smollett would be charged. That means the 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m., and 11 p.m. shows. That's primetime. Yeah. Primetime, right. Chris Hayes, Rachel Maddow, Lawrence O'Donnell, Brian Williams, who used to be the NBC news anchor. They covered oh, oh, oh. it. Oh, the same Brian Williams that saw dead bodies floating where there was no water? Maybe why he's now at MSNBC at 11 o'clock instead of NBC at 6.30 at night. Uh, but higher. they covered it for zero minutes. And look, opinion shows I give a lot of leeway to because it's the editorial page. The problem here, the issue for MSNBC here, Sean, is the fact that they covered this story heavily when the narrative fit what they thought their audience wanted to hear. This was custom made for an MSNBC audience as it was presented in the beginning. Two white males attack a gay black actor with bleach and a noose and a MAGA hat. And a MAGA hat yelling, this is MAGA country. And despite the fact there are many questionable parts about the story from the very beginning, and I withheld judgment as well, as in what are two men walking around Chicago in a polar vortex in 30 below degree weather waiting for a gay actor they probably have never seen on TV before, prepared for that very moment. And then once Smollett wasn't handing over phone records or they're heavily redacted, that's when you knew there was a problem. But MSNBC and NBC and a lot of other news outlets, not Chicago media, they did a great job here. They went ahead and presented it as an attack, as if it were fact, instead of using that key word, alleged, and now it's coming back to bite everybody. You know, Sean, let me put it in context. Um, besides missing the biggest abuse of power corruption scandal in history and the hate, you know, Trump mob mentality media, uh, going with every story that's anti-Trump, proven wrong to just move on to the next story, act like it never happened. You know, look at how often they have been wrong. I had Richard Jewell's attorney on, Lynn Wood, who I've known since 1996. Um, we went back that far, but then it's UVA, then it's Duke Lacrosse, then it's Cambridge Police, then it's Zimmerman Trayvon, then it's Ferguson, then it is uh, uh, Baltimore. It's not vetting Obama. It's not after eight years telling the real statistics of failure of Obama. Uh, it is destroy Trump. It's, it's fascinating how wrong they are, how often they are so wrong. Well, if you look at the last two cases in particular, both the Covington case and now this one in, in Chicago, both of them, it was a rush to judgment because the narrative fit this idea that, that anything that's anti-Trump has got to be something that we jump on and go with. If you look at what Don Lemon said, he attacked you last night, but look at what he said that Jesse Smollett has lost in the court of public opinion, and it's, quote, it's not his fault. He went on to say, when something happens and it's controversial, everyone is coming for you. And so I knew everyone would be picking apart his story. It's not for me. That's not my concern. That wasn't his concern. There was, this gentleman stoked racial hatred. He spoke homophobic hatred, and he used the resources of the police. I'm all for forgiveness, Sean. But this individual hasn't even admitted his problem. He hasn't admitted the crime. And Don Lemon's rushing and saying that I'm more concerned about him than the thousands of people who didn't have police re resources well, at the look time. At the, that we have 24 detectives, and further, Hold on. Yeah. But, right. So there's 24 detectives assigned that weren't doing other things for the people of Chicago. But furthermore, this concern that everybody has about fake news and further divide, this is exactly what it was happening. But it was inspired by the left, and now they want to ignore it. That's a problem. By the way, are you really working for Extra Extra? Congratulations. I am. Uh, that's, Thank you. That's actually it's awesome. Great. Good for you. Joe, we'll give Thank you a quick uh, 20 seconds. Go ahead. Wrap it up. I think in the end, Sean, MSNBC didn't cover this last night because they were afraid their audiences would be offended in their safe spaces, as if we don't give them comfort food and tell them what they want to hear, then they're going to go somewhere else. People need to be told what they need to hear instead of what they want to hear, and we're seeing that across a lot of news organizations at this point. Just report the news and don't worry about the feelings of your audiences in these cases. Larry Logan was on with us last night. 90% of the media is left, and, it get, and they're wrong. To the point and where now they're calling her, by even, the way, now they're, they're calling even, her a conservative. The oh, second yeah. that she didn't go uh, along with the neighbor, they the dismissed truth. her. I have no right. idea what her politics are. But when you get to the point you're willing to destroy a 16-year-old kid and not even make a phone call to find out if what you're, the 10 seconds you're looking at is true, that's why 
These companies are going to pay. I know Linwood. He is unrelenting. We'll see. All right. Thank you both. Uh, all right. Wait till you hear.